bees are the most effective pollinators. They're the only ones that collect pollen intentionally. So they have specialized adaptations that will allow them to get more pollen on their bodies. And then when they move from flower to flower, they're gonna be spreading more pollen to the stigma surface. Bees would be responsible not only for like spreading the genetic diversity among the um, plants in the tropics and biodiversity hotspots, but also for a lot of the animal species that people come to the tropics to see, like the quetzal, like the bellbird. Globally, bees are the most effective pollinators because they're the ones that are collecting the pollen for as a food resource for their offspring. So they have these like specialized adaptations, like one is called corbicula, another one's called scopa. Those are the hairs that they have on their legs. And they're just, just these little like fuzzy balls of pollen that are just moving pollen all over the place. And the more pollen that is moved, the better it is for uh, the genetic diversity of the rainforest, of the tropical forest, the better it is for the wildlife that lives here and the better it is for the crops that we consume. Uh, we're trying to measure like what characteristics of agroforests are best for, well, focusing on stingless bees, but it could be like we're collecting all bees. So with the idea being that the farms could be certified as diverse agroforests, like 12 tree species per hectare, um, a diverse shade cover, I uh, would meet all these criteria for the most diverse farms, and it could be applied to silvo pastoral systems, it could be applied to coffee farms, cacao. The reason why we're collecting from, uh, like noting what plant species also, is because we're gonna try to construct uh, networks of the interactions and see if there's any differences in the interaction networks or the properties of those networks across the different kinds of agroforests. That's what we're doing, and uh, this is the fifth day, fifth farm that we're collecting from, and then we have to take all the bees back to the lab and uh, look under the scope to see what species we've collected. Look at these bees. There's no difference, right? It's like I was here with an undergrad student last summer, and for two months he was out in the field collecting, and I'd be like, you need to collect more of those, you need to collect more of those. There's 10 species that could be that same size, that same color, and there's no way to ID them. Then we get back to the lab and he's helping me ID them. And he's like, wow, that you are right. Like they're, all of these ones are different and they're really hard to ID. And I was like, you mean you didn't believe me? When I started working here, I started working with looking at the trees and coffee plantations that were better for birds. And then I started becoming more interested in bees because bees pollinate coffee. They can contribute to increasing the harvest in coffee. And so it was a way to get farmers more interested in uh, applying conservation in their farms. If they could plant things that would bring more bees in, then more bees could potentially increase the harvest. And so that would be an economic benefit to them more directly than birds. I got one bee so far. I had farms from about 950 meters elevation over the sea level to about 1100. And at the time I thought that was gonna be a really narrow range. Like I was trying to keep constant the roll of elevation. San Luis is actually the perfect place to study the elevational differences because it's a very steep valley right below Monteverde and the roads that run up to Monteverde, there's basically these natural transects that climb up the mountain and each one is spaced like one kilometer apart so you could do like replicates of these uh, elevational differences and see like, oh, well maybe it was just happening here at these farms along the main road because of something else like flowering plants or forest cover. But if you can replicate it across the different transects, then you can show that it actually is an effect of elevation and not something else. So that's what I started looking at first. It was more of a narrow elevation range, but with the replicates 
uh, it w it's really cool like way to set up like more an experimental approach to understanding the role of elevation in bee communities. That's another short term flowering plan. It only flowers like what like one month and then after that it's there's no flowers but during that time there's a lot of bees that are attracted to it so this is kind of like the same flowering strategy like yeah. a lot of bees but a short period of time. My name is Valerie Peters and I'm inviting you all to come and see this beautiful valley that is right below the base of the Monteverde Cloud Forest. We have collected about 200 species so far and we're collecting more. It's a great opportunity to see the beautiful tropics in an amazing climate with some spectacular views breathe some pure oxygen and help us do this important work to understand the best ways to uh, support bees in the tropics and understand any vulnerabilities that they may have to the changing climate.